Okay, let's go ahead and try and get ourselves started. Today we're actually going to begin a new phase. We're going to start out a new assignment where you're going to really be working kind of very intensely on a project for the next two weeks together with one other person in the class. So one thing that's going to be necessary is to figure out one other person that you like to work with, whose schedule is compatible with yours, who you see a lot in classes, and how you're not going to mind spending some uh, late evenings kind of just like plowing through some of the assignment work with. So go ahead and try and identify someone like that that you can work with. You don't have to tell me who it is, but ultimately, you know, when you go ahead and turn in your work, you're going to be turning in a group project as opposed to individual work. Okay, because the next assignment we're going to take on is really, it's a little bit bigger than just sort of taking on an individual house or the little field research station. And as is typical in a project of this size, you tend to be working as part of a team of several different players and you need to sort of subdivide the work and divide and conquer and get your work coordinated a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit about the types of tools we can use in Revit to coordinate group work next time. Okay, this time we're going to keep on going with the whole notion of how we add layers of complexity and information to the models. So today we're going to be looking at the issue of uh, area and room plans. So how we can, from a very early stage, start to plan out how we're going to allocate the total amount of space available in a building to different departments and different functions to try and work against sort of a space budget. Okay, we'll then go ahead and take a look at something called design options. And design options are a natural complement to what we did with uh, the phasing. Okay, in phasing we, sweated, we took a project and we extended it from 3D into 4D. Okay, so we took the 3D spatial objects and we went through and said there's a time dimension and we gave every object a uh, starting point where it was first created and a demolition point when it would ultimately, ultimately disappear. So if you can handle the idea of working into 4D and you're a sci-fi geek, you might like the idea of design options. Design options are very similar to having parallel universes. Yeah, ooh, you like that idea. Okay, and in your parallel universes, we can have several things that exist or coexist, but you only sort of look at one of those universes at a time. So we'll have some items which are shared between the different universes and some items which exist only in a single universe, and you can control as one of your view properties which of the universes you want to show in each of the different views. Okay? Okay, so let's go ahead and get ourselves started. That seemed to pique some interest. Um, if you want to, go ahead and open up on coursework. You'll find the assignment for uh, overview sheet. And there's also actually a project out there. So let's go ahead and open both those things. If you want to get the uh, PDF file, let me go ahead and open that up so we can take a look at that. And I'm also going to open up the project file. It's out there on the coursework server for you to open up too. Um, let me go over to Revit so we can take a look at it. And it is right there. The assignment for starting point. Let's take a look at this. Okay, here's the idea of what's going on here. We have the idea that we're going to go through and build a quad of buildings, a small complex of buildings, kind of like the science and engineering quad here, and that it's been being designed and built as a series of phases. So early on, we have a building which is over here on the left-hand side. Okay, if we go ahead and go back to a phase one view and only focus on that building, we can take a look at that. Maybe rotate around a little bit. And if I zoom on in there, that might look vaguely familiar to you. Okay, it's loosely modeled on a building that you're very familiar with and spend a lot of time in day after day. So um, this building is a simplified version of the Y2E2 building, but it uses a lot of the sort of the same basic geometry. It's got these stone panels on the outside, these big deep set windows all over it, a little bit of arcade kind of wrapping around it, and this kind of interesting roof form that's sort of unique. Um, Rather than having the roof actually sit right on top, we have this large hip roof, which is really a faux roof. Um, it is concealing a lot of mechanical equipment and ductwork and things that we don't want to see up there is also providing a base for some solar panels. But that thing has a big old hole in it because in the center of the building we have the skylight to shoot up and we also have all the mechanical equipment. So this thing is very loosely based just on our own Y2E2 building. Let me kind of again zoom back in there. Hover around. OK, 
and we can take a look. Okay, if you go into the floor plan views in phase one, you'll see that this building has been allocated to a number of different functions already. Okay, it has rooms defined in it, and these rooms have been assigned to different functionalities, different occupancies. So we have baths, classrooms, hallways, meeting spaces, offices, stairs, utilities. But all the different spaces there have been color coded and assigned to these different occupancies. And that's just going to help us organize and understand and quantify what's in that building. As buildings get very large like this, you need to have tables which really summarize all the square footage and all the different rooms so you can kind of keep track of everything you're designing. And this whole issue of really what are the rooms and the occupancies is really just controlled by this thing called a room object. So if you choose a specific room, the room is actually shown there. It's sort of invisible unless you just move your mouse right over. You can get something that looks like this. Select it. Then you can take a look at some instance properties for that room. That instance properties, it has a name, it has a department, it has an occupancy. For example, I can say that thing belongs to the CEE department or another department. Its occupancy is currently set to be office. Its name is also office. I can choose one of the other occupancies. For example, if I want that to be a meeting room, I just have to choose a different value as its instance property. Say OK. And what will happen is the color coding changes. So we can go through and just tag and code all of our different rooms based on their functionality. Okay, and sort of reassign them and put them in either different departments or put them uh, according to different functionalities they might have and tabulate that information. And this is sort of a very common step as part of just getting started with a bigger building. It's kind of area and space planning. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Okay, so the different floors of the building, let me go to level two, phase one. Okay, has pretty much the same layout as what's happening on the first level. Level three, again, is very, very similar, but the only difference on level three is there's this large balcony space over here on the right-hand edge. Okay, you'll notice in this project there have also been a lot of different views set up for you. So there are a level one phase one, a level one phase two, and a level one phase three view. And really the only difference between each of those different views is if I go through and take a look at the view properties, you'll see that it's the same basic view, it just has a different phase property set to it. So we can just choose the different phases and assign each of the views to the phase it should be displaying. Okay, and that's sort of what we talked about last time. So this just very naturally follows on from what we did last time. Okay, and we'll use it as a starting point for our assignment. Okay, so let's go back out there to the 3D view. I'll go to phase two, just so we get a sense of sort of the existing building, which is shown in gray, and a new building, which is shown over here. And we'll talk about what we have in mind for those buildings, as well as this large space, this big open field, which is showing in front of them. Okay, let's come back over to the assignment and take a look. Okay, in this assignment, you're really gonna be creating uh, several different buildings. The first building you're going to create is one that's going to be built during phase two, and it's a mirror image of the existing building, okay? And you're already seeing that in the model there. There's the existing Y2E-like building, and there's also the building across the way, okay? The building across the way, though, is really just an exterior shape. It's been locked in because we want to go ahead and have something which, at least from the exterior, mirrors the existing building, okay? But inside, there are no walls in there. It's a completely blank playing field. Okay, so at a high level for level for building in phase two, okay, you're going to also create a mixture of offices, conference rooms, and classrooms for some shared and uh, shared spaces between some departments. Okay, but really the task of subdividing that space, dividing it up into all the different rooms and offices and all the different functions within there, that's going to be your task in phase two. Okay, so the only limitation on phase two is you have to work within that existing shell. Okay, you can change some of the features of the shell. You want to go ahead and change some of it so it's less stone and more glass, or you want to go ahead and sort of play around with how it's articulated a little bit, you can. But at a high level, as you walk into that quad between those two buildings, those the two buildings should look symmetric. Okay, and that's really, it's kind of an off and a goal. It's as we go through and we design a complex of buildings, we all want them to look together. We all have a portal to the entire space, and you want some symmetry there, and you want to maintain that. Okay, 
The second building you're going to design, though, will be a future phase. And in that one, it's going to have more offices and classrooms. Okay, but for that one, really the sky's the limit. You can use your own creativity to come up with whatever you want. And we'll see a little bit later in the design program, your clients actually want you to try exploring some different options to really come up with sort of a very creative space. Okay, to get started, okay, we have this existing model. You can pull it down off the coursework drive. Okay, um, when you do, you should put it on the L drive or something like that. It's good to go ahead and for this project, especially store your files on the file server, the L drive. Since you'll be sharing with someone else, it'll be nice to have you create a folder just for your team if you want to and kind of keep your things together in there. Okay, the model has the floor plan views, the elevations, some 3D views, as well as some schedules already set up. And these have all been assigned to different phases. Let's go ahead and show you that. Okay, there's the existing phase one, there's also some phase two, some phase three. One of your first tasks should really be to go through and just set up the different views for the different phases. It's good just to get that out of the way right up front. It's sort of mindless, you just go through, duplicate, assign phases, but get that thing sort of set up so that you have some phases to work with. That way when you start doing your work, you won't be popping in and out of the view properties in general. You know, my rule of thumb is if you pop in and out of that view properties more than like two or three times in a view, think about duplicating a view and having two of them, each of them have separate view properties. Okay, it's easier just to sort of pick different views from the list. Okay, there are also some schedules set up. Let's go ahead and take a look at that because we have these views, we have these 3D views. Again, the aerial for one, just shows the existing building, phase two shows the new building along with the existing building. Phase three shows them both grayed out because you're gonna be putting something different out in that large gray area. Elevations look like they're only set up for phase one right now. Sections are also set up just for phase one right now. Even got a nice little 3D section for you there. <coughs> and there's also some uh, schedules set up with the quantities. For the schedules, let's show you how that works. For example, here's the door schedule. These are all the doors in the existing phase, in phase one, okay? If we go switching over to phase two, you'll see that there are some doors. These are actually the exterior doors to the building because they're already kind of set into the existing model or into the model of, for phase two, okay? As you go through and add new features and new walls, you'll be adding more and more doors and they'll automatically show up in the schedule. So there's really not a whole lot of work for you to do in the schedule as you just add your elements, they'll be showing up there. Similarly, if I look at the roof schedule, we can see what types of roofs we have and how many square feet of the different types we have. If you look at the wall schedule, we can sort of see there are different types of walls and the square footages for each of those. Okay, we're gonna start using these schedules really as the basis for a later assignment, okay, where we're starting to do a quantity takeoff of the building and using all these quantities and the square footages to start thinking about how we can actually estimate the cost of this building. Okay, the important thing about all these schedules though is for example, here's the windows for phase one. If I wanna create the window schedule for phase two, what do I need to do? I'll just duplicate it. Okay, there it is. It still points to phase one though, so I'm gonna rename it. Renaming really just being more the convenience of seeing it appear properly there. Okay, but I have to do that all critical, change its view property. You know, right click <coughs> on it and get to it that way. And I can change its phase. So instead of showing phase one, I wanna show phase two. And if I wanna show only the windows that are new in phase two, I'll set it like that. That way I'll be able to get a detailed list of all the windows that need to be ordered so I can go through and schedule that. Say okay. And there already are quite a few exterior windows. Well, that makes sense <laughs> in the scheme of things. Okay. Let's right. <laughs> okay. So let's go back and look at the assignment again. So here's what we're going to do. Here's your design program. Your client, Old Ivy University, has asked you to come up with a new design for these two buildings to meet their needs for their expanding engineering programs. Okay, the first building was already built, but it was really just the beginning of an entire complex for the site. Okay, and you're now gonna go ahead and complete that complex. 
Okay, the big constraints are that you have to build it on the line, it's the land that was already reserved. Okay, you want all the buildings ultimately to be connected together to the phase one building. So we want some sort of arcade or tunnel or something so that people who work in the different buildings can collaborate. Okay, and the new buildings need to complement, but not necessarily mimic the style of the existing building. Okay, by complement, you can complement things by using similar colors, similar materials, just do something that is somehow compatible with it. You don't have to look just like the existing building, okay? But realize that your new building will be seen in the context of the existing one, which is very real as an architectural design problem. So you have to kind of think about things that will work well together. Okay. You know, the idea is that as time has passed between the initial design and where we are today, though, the universities realize that they'd really like something that's a little more up to date. Okay, that big old box of a building that has the uh, deep set windows, that may just be feeling a little bit dated compared to the, oh, the, the forward thinking advanced ideas that these researchers are having. So they'd like the new buildings to have, you know, more of that you know, forward thinking, kind of cutting edge, you know, illustrate what you believe in sort of feel to them. Okay, so you know, if we're all about sustainability and using materials well, maybe we'll use very innovative materials or start thinking about how we can put shading features on the building or do things to it better and just improve its performance. Okay, you want to start basically having the buildings be more of a reflection and that's really what the client's coming to you to do is sort of, not just sort of repeat the old building, but go through and uh, do something that's a little more elaborate than that. Okay, for phase two, that's the building where you've been given the shell. They're giving you sort of the programmatic needs, and what you need to do on that is just basically subdivide the space. So within that building, we have different sort of departments that we'd like to accommodate. So we have earth systems and civil and architecture and electrical and urban studies. They'd all like to be hanging around in there with a certain amount of space allocated to each of them. Okay, and we'll talk about how we can sort of do some very general area planning first today. And then we're going to go ahead and have you break it up into a design of the individual rooms. And they have some specific rooms they'd like. They'd like offices, they'd like some meeting spaces. Let's go ahead and kind of be a little fl free about this though. You know, part of really what the client would like you to do is really come up with a design that promotes good collaboration between all the researchers and the faculty that are there. So unlike the first building, which is pretty much a long central hallway with boxes on the sides, okay, which if you've been in many buildings here on campus that are set up that way, you can attest to don't really facilitate collaboration. They're not really the best spaces for groups to work in. Okay, even here in our Y2E2 building, you sort of find that it's actually kind of hard to find a place for you to work together. If you really want to do something in a small group, if it's not sitting down at the ca coffee bar out in front of COPA, you're pretty much fighting over like eight conference rooms. And if someone else is already in those rooms, you're pretty much out of luck and you have to go somewhere else. So. For this new building in phase two, we'd really like to sort of explore things that are a little more fluid, promote more interaction. So even as we say offices, you know, think of them as workspaces. They don't have to have four walls on them. Okay, you're allowed to go ahead and think about pods of people working together or small groups. Okay, not everyone sort of lives in a walled office anymore. Okay, in the same way, oh, you know, what is just meeting spaces? You know, they don't have to be dedicated conference rooms. They can be alcoves or parts of halls that are kind of just set up where people just have access to whiteboards and places to sit down and just start drawing ideas. Okay, without having to reserve a room. Okay, we'd also like to go ahead and in this building include a couple classrooms that could handle computer instruction. So think about what a good design for a computer classroom would be like. Okay, not necessarily mimicking this one. This is actually not really a very good design for a computer classroom. The shape, the squeeziness between the aisles. You know, as soon as anyone has to kind of start moving around in here, this is really a pretty bad room in a number of different ways. It has nice AV equipment, but the layout isn't very good. Okay, so think about how you might improve that. What would work better? Do you really want a row of eight computers all, or should we do something a little bit different? Okay, that's the phase two building where you're subdividing. The phase three building is going to be a little bit different. The phase three building, now here's the sky's the limit. This is where the dean's office is going to be, as well as some very high profile professional development programs and a student center. Okay, so we'd like something daring, expressive, adventurous, just something that really is going to convey this very forward looking, we're looking ahead to like uh, where things will be, not the way they have been in the past. Okay, we again need to provide some workspaces. 
We need to provide, oh, just basic things like bathrooms and hallways and some meeting spaces, a few more meeting spaces. Okay. We'd also like to have an auditorium space, some sort of space where we could actually get, oh, maybe around 120 people together for a large class or a special event, to some place where we could actually get together. Okay. We'd also like to have a special space set up as a student center space. And you'll actually think about some options for what that might look like. It could just be a place that has oh, tables and chairs and whiteboards and kind of an informal place to work. It could be a space that has, oh, just you know, like a cafe or a coffee bar or some place where you can sort of eat lunch and just relax. It might be a combination of those two things. Okay. And really, what we're going to have you do as part of this is look up design options. Really, for the auditorium space and for the student center space, we want you to kind of think of a couple different ways you might propose that those would look, and then really illustrate them both as two different design options. Okay. The phasing's pretty much been set up for you. The phasing is that in phase two, where the existing or the shell of the building's been set up. You're just going to focus on the layout of the spaces to meet the program requirements. So it's pretty much <coughs> take it and subdivide and conquer. Okay. For phase three, when we have more money available, really show how you can evolve this into something that's really going to be the, the centerpiece of this entire complex. Okay. Do something that's kind of interesting and make an architectural statement. Okay. At each phase, you'll probably need to do a little bit of demolition. It really depends on how closely your buildings are linked. But at least at the point where they connect together, when you have an arcade touching the building, you might need to sort of demolish a little bit of something to put a, uh, a door in there. You, you'll, you'll probably have something that changes as the two buildings interconnect a little bit. Okay, so there might be just a little bit of demolition, but probably not too much of it. Okay, for the options, let's talk about that. Everybody likes to have options. People often don't have the budget <laughs> to pay for the options, but people like to feel that they have options. So you're going to go ahead and show them some options. One is in the auditorium space. We'll actually try to come up with two different ways you might configure that. Okay, and we'll explore that a little bit later today in class. But when we say two different options, that can be really different shapes of the buildings. That can be different materials in the building. It could be different configurations of the seating. It could be all sorts of different things. Really, it's just two distinctly different things. Okay, and you really have great flexibility there. The same thing is going to happen to the student center space. Okay, you could have sort of different shapes to that space, have different extensions to the building, or not. Or you can just go ahead and sort of change around the furniture and the layout of what's happening within the space. That's all sort of available okay, as part of what you can do there. So go ahead, the two different options for each of those different spaces don't have to be radically different, but at least make sure they're distinct enough that you know, someone who isn't familiar could look at it and say, oh, clearly that's option A and that's option B. Yeah, they have to be different enough that you can sort of notice the difference. So it's not enough just to sort of paint the wall a different color. Okay, you guys have been doing great on this next point, this whole idea about the realistic modeling. Okay, because, you know, really the level of detail to which you've been carrying out, uh, adding the contextual components, assigning the materials, the lighting, <coughs> geez Louise. The lighting you guys are putting in has been fantastic. Okay, but we're going to keep that high. As we go through here, think about the materials that you'd be using for each of those different surfaces and why you're choosing it. Is it a color thing? Do you like the feel of it? Is it there's something about it for sustainability that you're trying to use a local material or trying to do something that's going to be very energy efficient? So be thinking about your, building, your materials as you design. You're also going to start in this one thinking about the structure of the building. Okay, and we're going to talk about that explicitly on Thursday. We're going to show you how to actually place beams and beam systems and columns and foundations and all those elements. So if you've been waiting for how these things actually get supported, that's coming on Thursday. So we're not going to have you do a detailed structural design, but go ahead and at least if you're going to have some huge open expanse okay, that has a big glass wall in front of it, you know, think about the beam that's going to have to be there okay, to go ahead and support that and the columns that are going to come down supporting that beam. Okay, so. We'll get into the details of how you do the sizing and the detailed mechan uh, calculations later. But for right now, at least have a scheme in mind. Okay, Where are you going with all this? You're going to go through and give us some floor plans Okay, for phase two and for the phase three building. Okay, These should have room tags and color fills and things that just help us organize and understand what's on those plans. We're also going to have you create some detail plans, and I'll show you how to do that a little bit later today. As we're looking at the different design options, it's often very helpful 
don't just show me the whole building again. You don't need to show me the whole building. If really one wing of it changed or one little extension changed, we can do something I'll call a detail plan where we just pull in the crop boundary just to the area that's changing. Okay, show that alternate in that small area and then put that alongside the main plan. Okay, just so you can sort of see what's changed in that small area. Okay, the roofs, that should come pretty much for free. Exterior elevations. Again, as long as you're going through and doing your modeling, as long as you set up the view properties properly and do your cropping, you should be able to get your different elevations, again, just relatively easily. For the schedules, the schedules have all been set up for you. You may need to go through and just sort of adjust the phase filtering to show the right things for phase two and phase three. And finally, we want to do some 3D views. Especially, it'd be very helpful to have some ground level perspectives, like you're walking <coughs> up to the building. Because really, you know, most people will perceive that building. It's not the helicopter view. Most people walk up to the building. So it's nice to sort of see what things look like at the ground level as they're kind of coming up. So I can think of a lot of good places, oh, between the main portal or exterior views that really show your new auditorium or show your new building that's architecturally different. And those views, if you want to go ahead and render them and accurately show the light and shadows, all the better. Okay, so a lot of stuff in here. That's why we want you in a team, because there's a little bit of divide and conquer to this in terms of trying to think about how you're going to go ahead and do your overall design, but then really who's going to be operating the mouse on what parts of the building. Okay, so you know, we'll think about some alternate strategies for doing that. At least in terms of getting started, identify your team member, set up the views, get your model ready to go, and then we'll teach you how to share it next time. Okay, but be thinking about how you're going to organize your work. Okay, in terms of what to submit, it is the 2D DWFs of these sheets and the 3D DWF of the model file, and those will all fit on the coursework server again. We won't have anything nearly as big as those walkthroughs. Okay, and that'll all be due next Friday at the end of the day, okay? So this is one, it's certainly doable, but it has the potential to really creep up on you. So go ahead and think about who you're gonna work with, start setting up those views now, okay? And you know, don't wait till next Monday to get started with it or something like that because it'll really get to be sort of very overwhelming if you wait that long. We will on Thursday, on next time in every time in class between now and then, we'll allow some time in class to kind of keep on working with it. Because I realize for a lot of you, the only time you'll see your partner is in class, or easily see them, because your class schedules don't overlap very well. Okay, so we'll allow some time in class from that. We'll also have just a large number of office hours through the end of this week and through next week to go ahead and really support you on this. Okay, but go ahead and be aware of that, because it'll creep up.